dramatic shift in the forecast that is better for Houston and a lot worse for the New Orleans area. So we're going to detail it all coming up here in just a moment. First, I want to start with the very latest specifics from the National Hurricane Center. We're talking about winds of 65 miles an hour, this motion to the north and northwest at 13, that pressure down to 992 millibars. So we've seen the storm deepen all night long and all day. We now have a concentric eye wall within the storm itself. So a very well-developed system here. All of a sudden, yesterday, not so much. Today, and especially in the overnight hours, really has come together. Now, you'll notice how the clouds are being drawn up to the north. That's a good indication of its future path, and that's exactly what the National Hurricane Center says. In fact, here is a look at the brand new cone just coming in moments ago, and you can see they are now calling for a landfall of a Category 1 hurricane in southeast Louisiana. This little boot right here is going to be Plaquemines Parish. Then you've got Terrebonne Parish and Lafourche Parish is here in southeast Louisiana. So that's where the greatest impacts are expected to be, at least according to this forecast as it stands now. There is still some room for, for shifting here, but within that cone, we can see the center of circulation cross anywhere from Biloxi, Mississippi, all the way out, even still including extreme southeast Texas, but you'll notice Houston now explicitly, the downtown area, not included in that cone. This is the first time in about 48 hours that the Houston area has not been included in a cone, and I can tell you that the cone for both Laura and Marco have shifted well to the east, so this is better news for the Houston area and a lot worse news for the state of Louisiana, especially into southeast Louisiana. We're talking about still a very strong wind shear in the upper levels of the atmosphere that's going to help break this system down on its final approach, but it could still be a very weak Category 1 hurricane upon landfall there in Plaquemines Parish. Now, here's a look at the spaghetti plots. We've been showing these for the last couple of days, and notice yesterday and the day before, they were all clustered here across the Houston area, but look how much they have shifted off to the east. We're talking now from Mobile Bay out to New Orleans and maybe even to Vermilion Bay. So once you get to the east of New Orleans, uh, to the Lafayette area, that's where we're looking at the greatest concentration of models right now, and that's why we did see that shift in the computer models. Now, uh, one thing to note here is that um, I thought I had shifted this graphic a little bit, but if you look carefully, we have a hurricane watch now in effect for the coast of Mississippi, the entire coast of Mississippi, and all of southeast Louisiana. So uh, this is where we're looking at the possibility of hurricane conditions within the next 24 to 36 hours. We also have a tropical storm warning here for the island of Cuba. Tropical storm watches there for the Keys, including the Dry Tortugas, and into the Turks and Caicos. So obviously a lot of folks being impacted by this storm as it continues to work its way through the Gulf of Mexico. Mexico. And there it is. It takes us into tomorrow night at 1130. You'll notice that center of circulation right here, pushing up towards Plaquemines Parish right there, making landfall at the mouth of the Mississippi just to the south of New Orleans. This is going to put downtown New Orleans on the dirty side of the storm. So we're looking at a storm surge once again, pushing into southeast Louisiana and the coast of Mississippi. But in our neck of the woods, we're going to have a north wind. And really, we may not see too much out of this at all. We may actually see our weather improve a little bit uh, before this storm kind of takes a left turn and maybe bring some rain as we get into Tuesday. But certainly things looking a lot better for us here in southeast Texas as far as possible hurricane impacts as we get into Monday and Tuesday time frame. So there's a look at the satellite once again. You can see those clouds being drawn up to the north, uh, being pulled up by a trough of low pressure and you could see here on the visible if you look carefully right in this general vicinity there is an eye trying to form sort of an elongated system but a powerful little system nonetheless and the thing with these little systems they power up very quickly but they can also be torn apart very quickly so when you get these big hurricanes that take up the entire Gulf of Mexico they don't break down as easy but when you're talking about a storm that's only maybe 400 miles wide really not looking like a um, looks like that wind shear may actually get in here and help tear it down a little bit before its final approach there to southeast Louisiana. So if we're looking for any silver lining, that is it. And here's a look at that wind shear, by the way. This takes us into tomorrow, and you'll notice that wind is ripping across the central and northern Gulf as the storm continues to move up to the north. So we're going to start seeing Marco being sheared apart here a little bit as it makes its way towards the southeast. And as it approaches southeast Louisiana, you can see the high levels of wind shear across southeast Texas through Louisiana and into Mississippi and Alabama as well. Uh, and it's starting to infringe on the system at this time as we get into Monday. So again, this is better news. 
uh, for Houston. It's not so good for New Orleans, but at least the silver lining here is as the storm approaches southeast Louisiana, we should begin to see the storm begin to weaken and be torn apart a little bit. So this is not going to be a strengthening hurricane upon landfall, but it should be a weakening hurricane. And again, that is a little silver lining. The other one that I'm very, very um, concerned about as far as becoming a more significant system in the Gulf of Mexico is going to be Laura, and it is out here just to the southwest of Puerto Rico and is moving ever so close to the island of Hispaniola. So we've got the Dominican Republic on the right side. We've got the uh, country of Haiti here on the left side and very high mountains. We're talking about 10,000 foot peaks on this island. So if the center of circulation were to move across, the system may be broke down a little bit or be torn apart altogether. But the at least the forecast right now sort of skims the island. But then once it clears Hispaniola, it has the island of Cuba to deal with. So we're not going to see a whole lot of strengthening out of Laura in the next 24 to 48 hours. It's what happens beyond the island of Cuba once it gets in the Gulf of Mexico where we're really going to have to pay attention because some computer models do make this a pretty significant hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico. Now, the good news with Laura, first off, let's take a look at the satellite. You can see it here. It is beginning to come together, starting to have that fanning look here of the clouds, of the cirrus clouds. So starting to get that more familiar shape of a developing tropical system. And there is the cone of uncertainty, taking it right across the island of Cuba. And it's again, once it gets into the central Gulf of Mexico, there are a lot of questions. And there's two words that you need to, that we've really been focused on. This is A, a complex situation. It is historical. We've never had two tropical systems in the Gulf of Mexico at the same time. And it's a very uncertain forecast as well. And the reason why is because you have Marco that's clearing the path for this. Does Marco buckle the ridge and allow Laura to turn right much sooner, maybe affecting portions of the Florida Panhandle, Alabama, or Mississippi? Or as Marco makes its way through southeast Louisiana, does it begin to amplify that ridge, making it stronger, pushing Laura more in our direction? Lots of questions remain at this time, and Laura is going to be the one that we're going to want to watch as we get into the next couple of days. Now, the good news that cone has shifted to the right as well. Houston not explicitly in the cone any longer. So for the first time in about 48 to 72 hours, Houston is not included in any cone, whether it's Laura or Marco. So again, uh, some encouraging news, not totally out of the woods. This is going to be one we're going to want to watch because as we know, strength forecast, you can throw out the window. Uh, the Hurricane Center obviously does their best, but as we have seen with Marco, they were calling, oh, well, you know, it, it'll never see hurricane strength. And now it's right on the edge of being a hurricane and likely going to be a pretty powerful Category 1 hurricane within the next 24 hours before that wind shear begins to start tearing it apart. So here's the latest cone once again. So everywhere from, say, the Florida-Alabama state line all the way to the Sabine River really needs to pay attention to what could become a, a pretty significant hurricane here as far as uh, Laura is concerned. Uh, there's a look at the spaghetti plots, clear as mud at this point. We're talking about basically anywhere from the west coast of Florida, from Tampa to, to uh, Key Largo, all the way out to central Louisiana. And yes, there are even a few computer models that still put this in the state of Texas. So lots of uncertainty, but of more concern is going to be what exactly happens with Marco. And it looks like that is good news for Houston, bad news for New Orleans. Here's why. Let's take you up to 18,000 feet. And I want you to keep in mind that when you're looking at areas of high pressure. Okay, I want you to look at these like uh, like bumpers, so to speak. Hurricanes, tropical systems, areas of low pressure, they don't like high pressure. They're very lazy systems for as ferocious as they are. They're just kind of like, oh, I don't want to go that way, but I will because they just don't want to fight. Okay, that's kind of the way you need to see this. see this. High pressure dominates, okay, and they sort of ring around it. They, they ring around the periphery of these highs. So wherever you see a high, Picture it as a bumper. So as we put this into motion, we've got this trough of low pressure here centered over the state of Louisiana. That is going to be lifting out. That is what is drawing the system up to the north as this ridge of high pressure out to the east begins to build in. So as we put this into motion, you'll notice how that high stays there. Here comes Laura as Marco continues its northward track, sort of eroding the western edge of this high a little bit. And as we continue to look forward, look how the high begins to erode, opening the door here for Marco to go straight into southeast Louisiana. But you'll notice another area of high pressure system out over New Mexico that is building in across the state of Texas. So here comes our bumper. Here, here comes our brick wall, our atmospheric brick wall pushing into Houston. That is why we have seen all the computer models shift off to the east. Because remember, that's a bumper. That's an atmospheric brick wall. High, the uh, tropical 
storm or hurricane could not penetrate that. So again, it goes to the path of least resistance right between the two areas of high pressure. So as Marco clears the way, here comes Laura. So that's the question. Does Marco op continue to open that door a little wider to cause Laura to turn to the right? Or does high pressure build in behind Marco, pushing Laura a little bit closer in our direction? There's a lot of questions that remain at this time, something we're going to have to continue to watch very carefully. This is not an updated seven day. I um, accidentally jumped to it here, um, but obviously going to be a lot of significant changes in the forecast, maybe drying us out as we get into the early part of next week. But again, questions remain heading into Thursday and Friday regarding what happens with Laura. So one more time, that is the very latest with the two systems that we're dealing with, Marco and Laura. Let me take you back to the beginning for those who joined in the middle of the broadcast here. And we will talk once again, uh, we'll just run through sort of the specifics of uh, the very latest from the Hurricane Center. So this is Tropical Storm Marco, winds 65 miles an hour at this point. It is on the verge of becoming a hurricane, moving to the north-northwest at 13, that pressure down to 992 millibars. There's the cone of uncertainty right there, stretching from about Biloxi, Mississippi, including all of New, uh, the state of Louisiana and the extreme portions of southeast Texas. So uh, not totally out of the woods, but certainly a lot better than it has been over the past 24 hours. So don't downplay it too much, but again, Certainly encouraging, but very bad news uh, for southeast Louisiana, where they could be looking at a weakening hurricane making landfall there just south of New Orleans. There's a look at the computer models once again, have shifted well to the east. And again, we now have that hurricane watch in effect for all of southeast Louisiana. That does include the city of New Orleans and coastal Mississippi, a tropical storm watch there for coastal Alabama, and as well as the dry Tortugas and the keys of Florida tropical storm warnings here for the island of Cuba. Tropical storm watches and warnings for the southeast Bahamas and into the Turks and Caicos. So that's the very latest on the two systems uh, as it stands right now. Certainly lots of room for error. Lots of lots can change over the next 24 hours, especially with Laura. We will continue to keep you guys updated. And of course, follow me on Twitter at KHOU Blake 11. That is at KHOU Blake 11. <laughs> I, I, I'm uh, pretty much 24 hours a day at this point. So I'm more than happy to pass along the information as I get it. And if you're not going to follow me there, then just watch for the updates here on Facebook and, of course, on TV. Our next update will be tonight at 6 o'clock, and the next big update from the National Hurricane Center will be tonight at 10 o'clock. So we'll see you then uh, on either show. Have a great day.